So good night again. Good evening. Thank you guys for joining tonight's session. Um, as mentioned, normally we open in prior, which I did um, before I press record, but hey, so we'll try to get this recorded. Now we we'll get this class about 30 minutes and then after hoping that we can open for questions. If you do have questions as I speak, you can write it in the chat and um, I'll try to respond. But there's a lot of content that I wanted to get over. Um, for persons that know me, know that I don't do fluff trainings. I, I really don't. Um, I try to teach what I know. And I know that if persons need my help after, then they can always contact me. So at the end, I will share, you know, how we can possibly work together and all of that. But I do believe that if you follow um, the steps, or at least take one of the steps, of the five that I will share tonight, that you will be able to build a brand. So let's begin. So I added a disclaimer to my training to say, personally, I don't believe that there is only five steps to build an impactful and profitable brand. I don't believe that there's just five steps, but I wanted to not one i didn't want to overwhelm persons especially for persons that are new to the online space there are a lot of new persons that probably you know because of the corona thing they are thinking okay well is it possible for me to earn an extra stream of income online you know is this even for me um so i know that i didn't want to overwhelm and i felt like five sharing five strategies or steps is a great way to start without somebody feeling too overwhelmed um i also thought i sat down and i thought about how my personal brand have evolved over the last uh well i think my personal brand started to grow probably about 20 13 2013 probably early yeah, 2013, end of 2013, there about, so that would be about seven years. Um, I probably made my first income online. I would say online in terms of, um, you know, persons internationally paid me probably about 2016, there about. Um, and that doesn't include my book. So my book came out in 2016, early 2016. So I'd say about that time I've been online. Um, I don't think I took the online as seriously as I did probably in 2018 when you just, as I grew, I realized that the power of using um, the internet and using <laughs> the different platforms that are available online that you really and truly are not limited to who you can work with and who you can impact and who you can touch, right? So tonight, um, again, I wanted to cover what is personal branding, and I wanted to just kind of look, at, look a little on digital branding, not that it's very different, but I just wanted to kind of give us an idea of how, um, because you can build a personal brand offline. Um, many persons have done it. If you are probably in Jamaica, you probably can think of, you know, just persons like, um, people on the TV, like, you know, radio show hosts that probably don't have an international appearance, but they have a local appearance, that kind of thing. And if you're overseas, I'm sure you can think of the same thing. I wanted to also look at some myths about making money with your brand as a kingdom entrepreneur. So I tend to, my trainings tend to be towards kingdom people because I do believe that there are many people out there that are teaching what I'm sharing tonight but one of the things that i found when i came online which was probably one of the struggles was that i wanted my faith to be very paramount i didn't want persons this is a personal conviction and this is not about anybody else so if you don't you can be a christian and don't feel like oh i want everybody to know because that's not that's we know our relationship with god has nothing to do with others but my personal conviction was that um i wanted I wanted to be very bold with my faith and I, I didn't see many people online doing that. So that was a struggle, especially when it comes down to money making. So I wanted to share a little bit about that. Then I get into the five steps, the building your impactful brand. Um, I wanted, I included this part, keys to brand clarity, because the truth is 
if you don't have brand clarity, then you might not be able to understand or you might not get the traction that you want as you would um, regarding building an impactful brand. And then I'm very practical. Anybody that have done training with me know that I'm very practical and I love to give homework. It's a teacher in me. Um, so I'm, I'm going to share three simple things that you can do now. Like after you get off the phone, after you get off this call, you can say, okay, this is what I'm going to do this week or especially from, for those of us that are probably quarantined or we decide to stay home for the next two weeks because we have children, whatever the case is, at least we can say, you know what, within the next two weeks, I can do one out of these three things. So just again, because I know that quite a few persons signed up that don't know me, um, my name is Crystal Day. I'm an award-winning author. Um, I've written a book, a four, four, four or five book. I have a new book coming out with, a, with my teen girls, um, my teen mentors, mentees, and I'm so excited about that. That's coming out next week, Living a Royal Reality, the teen edition. Um, and I'm an international speaker, corporate trainer, brand strategist, and I'm the CEO of Daylight Publishers, which is a faith-based publishing and consultancy company. And um, I'm passionate about three things in my business right now. I'm helping aspiring authors to write and market their best-selling books, equipping Christian coaches um, with launching their, their coaching career, and um, teaching new kingdom solopreneurs. And I say solopreneurs because this is for persons that are like individuals like me. I'm a solopreneur right now because I don't have a team that is helping me to build. So that's what normally what would I consider a solopreneur to build a profitable brand God's way. So that's my thing. I try to incorporate my faith because I know a lot of persons, you know, want to know, okay, how can I do all of what I'm doing without feeling like I have to like compromise them. <laughs> So let's jump into it. So what is personal branding? So there are many definitions I have found, but for some reason I like this one from Caroline Saldo. And she said, branding is a process of influencing perception. Branding helps your clients perceive you and your company in the way you choose. And here's why I love this um, definition, because I, I like to tell the story of when I, in 20, this was 2016, uh, yeah, so this was January 2016. I was meeting with my team at the time. I was, um, I had a ministry, She's Royal Ministry, that I followed in 2014, and we were just going through a little change um, at that time. And I remember I was meeting with my friends, two of my very best friends, and they were basically just giving me advice of how we'd go forward with She's Royal. And then one of them, she said to me, you know, Crystal, you're a brand now, and you need to... That, 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 that I don't remember, but I remember she saying that I'm a brand and how offended I was. I was very offended by the word branding and why she comes calling me a brand. And it, it just sounded so self-centered. But it's funny because before she had that conversation with me, I had normally at the beginning of the year, I'd probably take two days off and spend some time with the Lord. And the Lord gave me some things that would happen in my life. And he said uh, something about brand. I know I wrote down branding and publishing and all of these things. And, you know, every time I share this story, I laugh because at the time when I heard about branding from my business, because I have a business degree and I started my master's, uh, from the business perspective, when we hear about branding, we think about the logos and the colors and we think about, you know, just almost seeming self-centered. And when it come on to Christianity, none of us wants to feel self-centered, you know? Um, we always want to, well, the word of God says that, you know, let's let self be slain. So when you think about branding, and I, I've been attacked <laughs> online a few times when Christians hear me say, you know, build a brand. And I've seen it a lot of persons coming on saying, oh, don't build a brand, don't build a platform, you know, build God's name and stuff. And then just in my own studies for the past three and a half years and just doing my own revelation that the Lord has given me, I've learned that branding has nothing to do with self-centeredness. Actually, branding is about perception. 
really and truly it's and this is why i love this definition because it says branding is a process of influencing perception because whether you want to admit it or not each of you that are listening to my voice each of you have a brand you are already a brand you don't need to do something um different to be a brand what the difference is is that no based on the fact that you're listening to this training you are now going to become more aware that because you're a brand you can now um own or shape your brand in how you want people to see you so for example if you remember when you used to go to high school there's always a girl that you she's the most she's always late um there's always a teacher that is she's that is always the hot girl teacher or you always have a teacher that is considered strict or you understand like these are brands um these were branding all this time because a brand most times well a brand is normally built over time based on your consistent action so persons are already perceiving you are already so somebody might say oh Oh, um, let me pick on somebody that I see online now. Um, I see Amanda online. Somebody might say, oh, Amanda, Amanda, she's always late. That's a brand. That's how somebody perceives her. And if she doesn't do something to change that perception of her, then her brand might not be as positive and as influential or impactful as she wanted to be. Right? So everybody, I want you to type in it. The, the chat i am a brand i am a brand whether you want to believe it or not you are a brand no matter persons who say but i'm an introvert you are still a brand right um you are still a brand just keep that in mind so let me continue so branding helps your clients perceive you and your company the way you choose so this is why i'm telling you that now you are listening to this um video yes everybody's typing i'm a brand i'm a brand yes you are a brand right so now when you are aware of your brand and this is why i'm doing this training because now when you know that you are aware that you are already a you are already a brand because you already have a platform you can know influence how person see you so i'll give you an example later though but when it comes to branding, it's not what you think about you and your business, it's about what others think. So sometimes, many persons, I remember I had a friend that she's always late, like always late, like late for work, late, and no matter, like, that's how we see her, but for some reason she didn't see herself like that. And, you know, she eventually got fired from her, or they didn't, um, they didn't, renew her contract at work because she was always late but she refused to accept that so your brand is what people think about you but you can influence how person see you so as a result you now can be intentional about being consistent in building this visibility building your credibility and now building the customer loyalty now i know many of you might say well i don't have a customer i don't have customers yet great like if you don't have no customer great which is great because the truth is the fact that you're on this call it means that you're interested in entrepreneurship nobody sees a brand training and come on if they are not interested in some kind of entrepreneurship and that means later don't you want to sell something right so branding is pivotal in making a lasting and memorable impression on your customers and i'm sure some people can think about some of their favorite brands right probably um when it comes on to i don't know your re favorite restaurant or your favorite um coffee some people will say oh no uh starbucks is the worst but yet still somebody else said dunkin donuts is the best like it's based on your perception So when you think about personal branding, personal branding is about you. And the truth is, with personal branding, now as you build your business, especially as the truth is, as solopreneurs, solopreneurs most times your brand is about you. So, for example, with daylight publishers, really and truly, I it's my desire that daylight will outlive crystal. 
just like, for example, a grace or an apple, right? I, that's the, the vision that I have. But for now, until I'm able to get that team of HR or build that team, people hire people hire daylight publishers because of Crystal Day and because they there's something about Crystal Day that they like, right? So with with, with personal branding, why you can, I try to brand my business differently, but it still will incorporate because we're still solopreneurs. And that's what you see your your personal brand does. Another example when it comes on to personal branding that I would love to share is that, for example, you see a lot of, for example, in Jamaica, you see Lime probably use, I don't know who they use as their ambassador. So let us use Digicel. Digicel use Shelly and Fraser and she, they use, so they use persons to represent the Digicel brand, persons, because they are you now trying to use other person's personal brand to help us to see digital in our different light so i hope everybody get what i'm saying so what is digital branding this is no this is who you build this is how it should be how you build your brand using online platforms so again you can build a personal brand offline um again like in your job that's an offline brand what like you're the ceo of it or you're already customer service representative at your, your, your bank that you work and person see you as the at girl at work or person see you as the miserable person at work. That's kind of a brand that you're, and that's an offline brand. But now as entrepreneurs, our solopreneurs, kingdom solopreneurs, now we can use online platforms such as social media, a website, different apps, video to now help us. And that's what digital branding is about. With digital branding, you're using different marketing strategies now to build a loyalty, provide value, and of course, to differentiate yourself. Because the truth is, every industry that you're going to consider going, people would say it's saturated. But you don't see it. People say lawyers are saturated, but you still have thousands of people going to law school. Doc, the medical field is, but yeah, so there is still a place for you no matter where, no matter which industry you're interested in. So let me tackle the four myths about making money with your brand as a kingdom entrepreneur. One, this is about making money, right? If you... The, the, you think we think that if we don't have a lot of followers or subscribers, then we can't make money. That's a total lie. Like that's so not true, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, that's not true, right? Again, everybody start. Actually, everybody start from zero. Once you sign up on Instagram, you have zero followers, right? So it just takes consistency and the right strategy for people to build. But you can make money without having large subscribers. Two, you can just launch a website or a product and you'll be successful. Sometimes when you listen, you know, some of the gurus and some of the YouTube, you go on YouTube and they tell you, you know, um, this product and you make a million dollars and like, believe me, if it was that easy, all of us would be a millionaire. So yeah, that's not a me. That, that, that's definitely a me. Sorry. Um, three, you have to be selling every day and annoying people to make money. Again, that's not true. You are able to be very intentional about sharing content and all of that in order for you to um, sell and to sell and serve people without feeling annoying or feeling like you're bothering people. And then four, that you will just make six figures online. So the six figure thing is a big thing. Um, in Jamaica, I didn't get it initially, but six figures meaning you're making 100,000 US for the year. And Sometimes some of the gurus that we follow will be, we will start to believe that, oh, it's just so easy. If it was, again, all of us will be making it. So it is possible to make money online, but it's not a quick, like get rich quick scheme. It's not like you're buying the lot one, oh, I'm gonna, no, we're not gambling. We are being intentional about building a brand um, that, doesn't, that doesn't allow us to compromise our faith. So let's get into the steps, right? So the first step is to share your story. Now, when it comes down to sharing your story, the truth is this is how you connect with people. 
sharing, especially as, and I'm talking about solopreneurs, and the truth is even if you think about some of the bigger companies, if you, many of us are influenced by, you know, when we hear, for example, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A is not in Jamaica, but we have, most of us have heard about Chick-fil-A, and I know that because it's a Christian company, it's very, it's very clear that they're a Christian company, when I go overseas, I at least try to buy a Chick-fil-A, why, because I'm, I buy into the fact that they are Christians, right, no, I don't necessarily know who owns Chick-fil-A, but I buy into their story. And that's the power of sharing your story online. For us as um, solopreneurs, sharing your story doesn't necessarily mean that I have to be raped, I have to be um, abused, or I have to be, like sometimes we think only negative stories make it, or negative story sells, that's not true. Persons are not necessarily it's not so much at the negative or the positive, is that what the why behind what you're doing. And um, you guys can always Google, I, I shared it earlier in December, about, I think it was Simon Sinek, that's his name. Um, he has a YouTube video called something like that about the why, but basically that people buy in your why. And that's a great example, very short video, probably 15 minutes about you know, why people buy, people buy into your why, right? And so I want you to understand that all of us have a story and I hear it from my clients all the time. Um, but Crystal, I never get no abusive story. No, what people want to know is why you're doing what you're doing. That's your story. Your story could be, you know, that you just love children, you know, like it really no matter positive negative or however you want to put it what's the why behind what you're doing and this is the the tip i want to give you i want you to take some minutes 20 minutes and write your story write the why behind your brand why I, like i don't have time now but i could tell you why christian coaches alliance was started and the logo because more because the world need more christian coaches right Daylight International or Daylight Publishers, it's saving time. I believe that God has called me to save souls, um, save persons' time, money, and save souls through writing, through publishing books, right? So that's the why. And of course, if you follow me otherwise, you know otherwise. Step two is to get clear on what you want to be known for. Now, this one can be a little tricky, especially if you're passionate about more than one thing. But I can tell you, um, because I've done it incorrectly, that if you, if you are trying to do three different things at the same time, you might not have the level of success as you'd want, especially financial success. So it is definitely after I've made it, the, the, I wouldn't say the mistake, but I guess I was learning. I would have probably done it a bit different and just focus on one aspect and then add, instead of trying to do so many things at once. But I want you to brainstorm your skills and expertise and choose which one right now that you want people to see you as an expert in. And persons will say, but Krista, what do you mean I'm an expert? It just means the one where you can chat the most about. Can I tell you? The one that you will just like get up every day and yeah, right? Three, know your target audience. I want you to do some research. Who is God calling you to serve? Is it children? Is it um, adults? Um, you know, single mothers? Is it teen girls, right? However, you want to know your target audience. Four, yeah, three, four. Um, create a cohesive brand aesthetic. So this means that because you are going digitally, you, how you look online is very important. So choose your brand colors, your brand name, your logo, your mission, your vision, all of that. You want to kind of start looking on that. And let me give you a tip right here. When you think about your brand colors and your brand name, don't just think about, oh, my favorite color is purple, so I'm going to use purple. Because if you're trying, if, for example, you're talking about money, 
suppose you want to teach on money and, and, and budgeting, then green is a better color to use because green is a money color, right? You don't want to use purple. So you want to know what you're teaching or what you're about, what the brand is about before you choose your colors, right? And also who you're targeting. Step five is share valuable content. This is very important. People want to see that you're an expert. People don't just want, you can't just come out one day and say, oh, pop, I am a teen specialist in, nobody knows you, nobody knows that you're capable of. So you want to share content around, you know, just different things. And this is why you see people, um, when speakers, for example, I'm a speaker and I want, I want people to see that I'm a speaker. I take pictures when I go out to speak so that people can see that, oh, she's actually getting speaking engagements. Or um, when I put out my client's books, this is me sharing content and showing my expertise that I'm able to help persons. So let me go back over it one more time. One, step one, share your story. Step two, get clear on what you want to be known for. Step three, know your target audience. Step Four, create a cohesive brand aesthetic. Step five, share valuable content on your digital platform. So let's go to four powerful keys to getting your brand clarity. As I said, brand clarity is very important, right? You want to know what your brand is about, especially if you want to get paid in the long run. Here's a tip that I would say. Don't try to, as you come online, to try to just start to sell people. Even when I'm working with my authors, any author that, I, that knows me, unless they, they come with their book ready and they want to publish, but if they, they don't write their book already and they're starting from scratch, I start to tell them, start building a platform, start building an email list, start putting yourself out there from before. Take a professional photo up front. These things so people can start to get to know you and start to trust you. Right? So the four powerful keys to getting brand clarity. Audience, know who you are called to serve. And again, many of you might be able, many of us are multi-talented, multi-passionate, and we can serve many people. But if you want to make money, you have to start one place. Niche, what will you serve them? So what is the problem that they're struggling with that you can help them with? So for example, some, I'm going to give the example of teens because everybody I know wants to help teens, right? Teens struggle with many things. You don't want to try to solve all of their problems. Are you going to come out as a peer pressure specialist? Are you going to come out as a confidence specialist or a self-esteem specialist? Are you going to help them to get over drugs? Are you going to help them to get over their abuse? Like, don't try to solve all their problems. Choose one. Again, then we go back to the story. You see, we come back to story. Why? The story is why. What makes you so passionate about helping them, these persons? What about it? If you choose peer pressure, were you pressured? Have you, even if you weren't pressured, you have seen, you're a teacher, you see it's happening, right? There's so many aspects that your, your why can touch. Now, this is the important part for getting paid. The product, what will you eventually sell? So again, you start out giving free content, sharing free content, but then eventually for you to get paid, nobody's going to just get up and pay you. You have to have some kind of product, whether it be a book, a course, um, start speaking, something. You must offer something for people to be able to pay you, right? So the action steps. The action steps. So you have learned tonight what branding is. Many of you are were kind of still uh, not quite sure. And I hope that you have gotten some clarity tonight to understand because you are already a brand. What you need to do now tonight, after tonight, um, or this during this week, or I want you to think about okay, when when somebody hear my name. What's the first thing that they, I want them to think about me? And some of us are going to get religious and say, oh, I want them to see me as a child of God. Okay. All of us who, like, you're not the only child of God. We're talking about in the business realm right now. Um, do you want to be known as the confidence coach for single mothers? Or do I want to be known um, as the youth advocate for at-risk teens or do I want to be known 
um, for the writer who um, writes love poems. Like you, the, the more niche you are, actually the better chance you have at getting paid. So what are your action steps? All right, add four. One, start sharing your message on social media. So start sharing, make a post, let people know why you want to do what you're doing. Two, you need an email list. Like you need an email list. You don't, don't, you can't focus, you can't, and I'm gonna do another training sometime um, next week, next week about uh, social media, but understand that you can't depend on social media alone because social media algorithms change. Social media is always changing. You want to have an email list now, you can build a relationship with people. So if you realize I did not share the link on my social media because I wanted persons that are part of my list, persons that are opting to be a part of my community to be a part of what I'm doing. Again, be consistent with putting out value. You can't say that you are this person, right? Um, best way to, to build an email list is just start. Just ask people to sign up. You can give them a free bit, like I have free bit. Um, this offer something free to get them on your list, something of value, something preferably around your brand right? Be consistent with putting out value. You can't put out something nice this week and then three weeks after them they hear from you, like, no, that means people are going to see us inconsistent. And if I see us inconsistent, I don't know if when I pay you, you're going to show up, you're going to show up, right? And four, I would say, listen, motivational messages. I want, because many of you are going to struggle to put yourself out there. Many of you are introverts and you're going to struggle. And finally, um, because you're online, I, I found when I was preparing, I found two resources that I don't, some of you might have it, some of you might not have it. So once I'm finished, I'm going to send this resource out to you. It's 30 ways to build in your brand cheat sheet and also five ways to monetize a message. And you can go through those things. Now, if you are struggling now to, with overwhelm, not sure what to do, as a brand strategist, I can help you to create that clarity. Um, to help you to have that strategy to see, be seen as an expert so that you can eventually start making income. And if you are making an income now, increase your income while making an impact, right? And if you're a woman of faith or a man of, man of faith, I know you want to build a business or a brand where you don't feel like you have to be bothering other people or begging other people or compromising your values, right? So if that's the case, you can sign up for a free discovery call um, to see how I can help. So I wanted to stay on at the 30 minutes um, because I didn't want the training to be very long so that when I send it out, I'm gonna send out a replay uh, by tomorrow and so you can listen it again, right? So I'm gonna stop the recording.